I'm Sonia. I'm Beb. And I'm Kate. And today we're dishing with you from Kramer Books and Afterwards Cafe located in DuPont Circle at 1517 Connecticut Avenue Northwest right here in Washington. And this is one of those places that I think everybody comes the first week that they arrive in Washington. They better. This is such an institution. It 35 is. years it yeah. has been here. It's one of my favorite places here in D.C. and one of the first places I came when I first moved to D.C. Exactly. Everybody says this is the first place you have to go to. Yeah. And actually, funny enough, after all the times I've been here, I never realized there was a upstairs seat here. <laughs> either. And I've been here a gazillion times. I never knew this area was here. Great place to come and get a book, of course, mm -hmm. but then also nibbles and noshes and all the other stuff and to desserts. eat. Such good and desserts. And this is awesome. Raising about the desserts. People the I've had pie. this before. Really? Yes. The goober pie. Well, since I'm you lusting. Had it, then I will eat it this time. You're going to get none of it. It's, it's for the peanut butter lover, and I love the chocolate <laughs> peanut butter combo. And there's something on the other end as well. It's the salted. Salted, salted caramel, caramel chocolate, chocolate yes. cake. But you know, they do this great thing here called shares. Shares. Which, sharesies, which they do a stack of three, and you can get three of them for $19. You can buy them separately. And some of the shares are these amazing. I mean, this doesn't even look like a share. I could just eat this. Well, the exactly. mom muscles. Really good. The Obama family chili. Uh, we are told that this is the Obama family chili recipe, although Kramer Books and afterwards substituted red peppers for green peppers. I guess if they were blue peppers, they would <laughs> like red state, blue state. And who doesn't love okay. some? Some tuna and avocado. This looks just yummy. Sushi great. Really good. Tuna. Sushi great. So it's, it's yummy and. Can and I do dessert first and work like dessert to dessert? Can I work that way? Well, you can I work sure. for me afterwards. Nice. <laughs> And our guest today is Paul Strauss, United States Senator, representing the District of Columbia. Welcome to Kramer. Thank you. And afterwards, Cafe. I have to get the whole thing in there. I just want to make sure everybody knows where you are today. But I have one sort of question that I think a lot of people have. United States Senator, but we also hear the word shadow senator. So what are we supposed to call you? What's appropriate? Well, you can call what me. You? Certainly <laughs> you can just call me Paul. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not really a very formal person, but the official name of the position is United States Senator. Uh, that's what it says on the ballot, that's what it says on the certificate. Shadow Senator is one of those nicknames that sometimes come with certain government positions, like the drug czar. His stationery doesn't really say the drug czar, he's the director sort of, of drug control policy. Fun title to wear. Well, most people call it the drug czar, and of course nicknames have a great history in our city and in politics for a long time. The executive mansion uh, eventually became known by its nickname. People People just uh, gave up calling it the executive mansion, and even today we just call it the White House. So uh, you can call me Shadow Senator. Shadow actually comes from a British parliamentary term, which is basically a minister or a government in waiting. Uh, it's not That's an true. inappropriate yeah. term, and it dates back to the very first shadow or U.S. senators that were elected before their territories became states. And that actually began with the territory that became Tennessee in 1796, back in the fourth Congress. We're now in the hundred and I'm going to stop Congress. you there because it, we only have eight minutes. So I does it require that you take a history lesson before you take this job? Because it sounds like you have you you've have got to know. memorize the book. Well, you know, without having and to vote, and I feel vote, like I learned a ton just in that <laughs> minute-long explanation. Well, well, thank you. You know, without the need to vote on a lot of legislation, you have a, a little bit of extra time to bone <laughs> up on stuff that other senators may not have. So when do you become a voting member? What is it that you're working towards so that way you can be on the Senate floor and well, fighting for the people? What, what we're working for is for the District of Columbia to be admitted as a state. Uh, just so like the last shadow senators from the territory of Alaska uh, eventually got their territory admitted as a state. So that's the goal, D.C. statehood. And we're basically pursuing a historic strategy of electing your senators in advance so that you can be ready to become a state just like that when the time comes. And where is the debate on D.C. statehood? It, I've heard about it the entire time that I've lived in this area, uh, but I've never seen a, a really serious push to make it to make it really happen, to, or at least on Capitol Hill to get those guys in terms of the of them being serious about it happening. Well, People in the district are serious about it happening, but on Capitol Hill. You know, in, in some ways we're closer than we've been in a long time because we do actually have a statehood bill that we're pushing and it's taken a while for us to get back to that point. 
You know, we've tried all kinds of different strategies. We tried a constitutional amendment. It passed both houses of Congress, but it was tough to get those state legislators to ratify it. Uh, then we got into these sort of diminished voting rights. Let's try little incremental steps. I mean, we got the right to vote for president incrementally. Maybe they could just give us one member of the House of Representatives uh, and we can start there. Uh, that turned out to be a bad strategy. It didn't work. We had to link ourselves with the state of Utah. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're, we're, we're getting back to basics. And we have a mayor who's committed to statehood. We have uh, uh, Definitely a, a populist that's behind community it. community that's doing it. Uh, even our most recent Miss District of Columbia uh, has been out there uh, helping get the word out. So we're doing everything we can to get back to our historic goals because that solves our two problems. We get full federal representation, but then we get self-determination, which is a whole other inconvenience that we as D.C. residents have because Congress is always telling us what to do and they're not really good at running cities. They're not necessarily good at running a country, but they're certainly not good at running cities. <laughs> well, we kind of joked about your duties when we were talking about you brushing up on all of your history, and you certainly told us about what a you know you're you're waiting to step in and, and be able to be the representative of DC. But what are your daily duties? Well, there's actually a lot that involves the District of Columbia in the United States Senate. So, voting or not, uh, I try and do what I can to be DC senator. So, for example, our superior court judges, even the family court judges, all have to be approved by the United States Senate and nominated by the President. No other community has their local judges picked that way, but we do. So when those judges go up to the Senate, we do our best to be their home state senator and help them out and help them through the confirmation process. Uh, a lot of times the Senate gets involved in other issues, uh, vouchers for public school students, whether or not we can fight AIDS and HIV with an effective needle exchange program. So in many ways what I do is similar to what uh, a lobbyist may do, but I don't like to use the term lobbyist because they're really private advocates. Uh, I'm a public advocate on behalf of an elected community. And you were elected. I, Let's I've talk about that. How long have I've you even to be been elected? Re-elected. Well, every six <laughs> years. Uh, so I was first elected in 1996, and I was re-elected in 2002, and most recently uh, in the 2008 election. Uh, when I ran with uh, Barack Obama at the head of my party's ticket. That was certainly an exciting uh, and wonderful moment for me. There's a, there's a, I don't know if it's a ballot initiative or what you call it, but you want to rename Pennsylvania Avenue to be something like... Well, we're trying to pick a name, but a absolutely. Okay. Uh, you know, we've What's had... What's the point of that? I mean, everybody knows Pennsylvania Avenue. Is that the whole point? Well, the idea is we're trying to get the word out to folks. And for a while, one of the effective ways to do that was with our license plate that mm -hmm. says taxation without representation. Is that on your car? Uh, it is on my car, and it's on most cars in the District of Columbia. Is it on the president's car yet? It is not on the president's mm. car, and that's certainly um, something that makes me sad. It was on President Clinton's car, President Bush took them off, and uh, President Obama hasn't put them on. And I don't know if uh, he doesn't have a screwdriver, or <laughs> he's, he's been very busy. <laughs> There's probably a guy for that, but he, they're not on his car, and that's unfortunate. So we're trying to really use everything we can to get the word out. And how great would it be, you're driving along, you've got one one of those GPS's and it says, you know, turn left on Give DC Statehood Avenue. I mean, that's a tough <laughs> message to ignore. I hadn't thought of that. Turn yeah. left on Give, give DC <laughs> Statehood <laughs> Avenue. It's just <laughs> one of the names. Voice. So, you know, because we, most people don't know that DC doesn't have voting representation in Congress. Not enough people do. We're mm -hmm. certainly trying to get the word out and what happened is the license plates are now confusing people. They think it's actually us celebrating the American Revolution and being uber patriotic. <laughs> They're not getting the irony. The irony. So, and we can't use the license plate as advocacy speech because you have to have a license plate. So we couldn't say no taxation without representation. So we tried to make it neutral so it would pass the legal test. We just said taxation without representation because that's what we've got here. Like Idaho has famous potatoes or New Jersey is the garden state. Actually, I never understood that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you shared one, uh, one of the things that about the district that irks you a little bit. Tell us in, in closing what's your favorite thing about our great city. <laughs> Uh, there's so many wonderful places uh, in D.C. Uh, we've got great nightlife. This is actually one of my favorite places, so I'm glad we're here at Kramer Books uh, and Afterwards Cafe. Uh, it's one of the. Uh, it's good to be able to go out at, at 
uh, late at night and, and enjoy urban nightlife and Give be able like to read at the same time. Absolutely. Those sirens. So, so, so I'm you glad we're here. City. Uh, I like being able to live in uh, a city with so many wonderful educational institutions, so many great cultural institutions, so many great museums. Uh, it's a great place to, uh, to live. Uh, to raise my children and uh, they really have everything here except uh, a member of Congress who can vote on their behalf. Well thank you so much Senator Strauss for being with us. We have learned a ton and we are very lucky to have you in this Take position. Take him out of the shadows. That's right. Out pleasure. of the shadow and into the light. Thank you so much. Thank and you. as always thank you for being with us. Thanks for following us here on The District Dish and come back and see who we're dishing with next time.